What is up guys, welcome back to another video. So this week we're bringing you something a little bit more different since all my lovely yogis have been asking for a yoga routine and it's been a long time that we don't do one. This routine is going to be a mix of strength and flexibility so we can get the best out of both worlds. So for all my strong calisthenics athletes, let's just get a little bit more flexible and for all my flexible yogis, let's just build some additional strength in your practice. The focus of this routine is going to be mainly on improving our shoulder and core stability, especially for handstands and for other arm balances, as well as resting in a stretching position so we can loosen up our entire body. If you find this routine to be way too hard, I would recommend just to give it a shot and do what you can and maybe see this routine as a goal. But as always, I'll be giving you modifications for each one of the exercises. And if you find this routine to be a piece of cake, use it as a warm up or maybe do it on the days that you're not feeling at your best. For this routine, we're only going to need our yoga mat or anything that you can practice on and a pair of blocks or books or anything that you can use to modify some of the poses. And that's it. Without further ado, we're going to start in our hands and knees. So place your hands at about shoulder width apart. Go into your knees. Place your knees back so you can be on a neutral spine position. And we're gonna start, as always, warming up a little bit our wrist. So lean forward, hold for like two seconds, and then go back. Let's go for seven more of those. So lean forward, go back, lean forward, externally rotate your arms, go back, lean forward, maybe add a little more pressure into your wrist, go back, three more, lean forward, go back, if you want to take a step further you can go into plank, lean forward, go back, and lean forward, just hold for five, four, three, two, one and come down. Now put your fingers facing you. Externally rotate again your arms so your bicep is going to be facing forward and your elbow is going to be facing back. And you're going to lean back. You're going to feel the stretch all the way here in the front part of your forearms. If this is too intense, bring your hands backwards. And if you don't feel it, bring your hands a little forward. Let's just go for five of those. So lean back, hold for like two seconds, then go forward, lean back, hold, lean forward, lean back, hold, make sure your arms are completely straight, you keep externally rotating your elbows, lean forward, go back, now, lean forward, go back and hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Now put your fingers facing you again, but the palm is now on the mat, Let me actually my hands forward. I'm gonna do the same backwards for five times, hold for two seconds. One, two, lean forward, go back. One, two, lean forward, go back. Keep your attention on your breathing the entire time. Two more, lean forward, go back. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose through the entire practice forward and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Now we're going to stay with our hands right here and you can either bring your knees back and just stay right here to hold it. I want you to protract your scapula so we are creating a strength in our scapula, in the protraction of our scapula. But if you want to take it a step further, raise your knees and be on your feet and we're going to hold here for 10, 9, tuck your pelvis in, 8, seven, six, keep externally rotating, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Get into a squat, do little rolls to your wrist, so find a little separation in your hands between your forearm and your hand, do little circles, you can do like a little fist, but don't close it too much, because that's gonna limit, if you do like a full fist, it's gonna limit the range of motion that you're gonna have on your wrist. 
So just a small pressure and a small closing of your fingers. Let's go eight on one side, plus four, five, six, seven, eight, switch side, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, switch hands, find a little separation, make sure in your squat you're keeping your chest up, you're open through the hips by pushing with your elbows, do like a little fist, let's go to the right for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and switch, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, give a little shake, now let's go into plank pose, from here, you're going to lean forward as much as you can, externally rotate your elbows, come down as slow as possible into Chaturanga. If this is too much, you can always go into your knees and be right here, because we're gonna hold the Chaturanga for about 10 seconds. So if you are here, hold it here. If not, raise your knees and hold it for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, push up into plank, hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lower halfway, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lower more, 5, 4, keep leaning forward, 3, 2, 1, and get the belly towards the mat, inhale for cobra, your shoulders here go back and down, you raise the chest, and you look forward, from here, untuck your toes, and exhale for downward facing dog. So if this is your first downward facing dog of the day, you might be tight on your hamstrings, so bend one knee at a time, stretching one hamstring at a time. Make sure your arms still externally rotating. You wanna imagine that your armpit is closing towards the central line of your body. Keep your attention on your breathing. We're gonna hold here for three deep, long breaths. Now on the next inhale, bend your knees, keep your arms straight, look forward, and you're going to jump towards your hands, slow and as controlled as you can, inhale, lift halfway, exhale, fall completely, inhale, raise all the way up, hands to touch, exhale, hands to the heart center, inhale, raise all the way up, do like a little back bend, and exhale, fall, plant your hands, you can bend your knees a little bit if you want to, inhale, halfway, now exhale by walking back, and keep exhaling while you're lowering down to Chaturanga, then inhale for upward facing, and then exhale for downward facing. Three deep breaths in here. Now, on the next inhale, raise your right leg up, towards the sky, exhale, bring the right knee towards the right tricep or higher, hollow up your body so you contract your core, inhale, back to single leg, down dog, exhale, now towards the left tricep, inhale, up, and exhale now towards the middle, touch the knee towards your head, your nose or your forehead, now we're gonna do one more time, inhale, single leg, down dog, exhale, towards the right tricep, inhale, single leg down dog, exhale, left tricep, inhale, single leg down dog, exhale, compress everything, hold here for three, two, one, now plant the foot, lower the left knee down, four, release or lunge. So accommodate your feet as you need to for this position. For here, you can be on your hands if you already feel the stretch on your hips and in your left quad and your entire hip flexor. You can stay here on your hands, or if you feel a little bit more open today, you can go into your forms and hold it here. Make sure you're not twisting to one side, but you keep your hips square. And we're gonna hold here for about 
20 seconds just to rest a little bit and open up into the hips. Your toes can be tucked or untucked, whichever feels better for you. Keep your attention on your breathing. Try to make each inhale longer and each exhale even longer than the inhale. Two more breaths. One more breath. Now from here, slowly come up. If you're on your forms, if you're on your hands, you're already up. Now we're gonna transfer to a skandasana by moving the right foot facing forward. You twist, the left foot is gonna be flexing towards me. And if you struggle to get your heel towards the mat, you can grab a block and put it right here. But if you can get all the way down, get all the way down, put your hands forward. Maybe you're on prey mode, so you can move the knee, the right knee towards the right and at the same time you're pushing the left leg towards the left so you're opening all through the left hamstring and if you want a deeper stretch on the hips instead of on the hamstring you can invert the foot and you're gonna feel it way way more on your hips i like to focus more on the hamstrings right now maybe wag your hands a little forward hold it here for one more breath Now from here, raise up, switch to the other side. So right foot flexes, left foot is plant. Find your spot, walk your hands a little forward, move around, even if we're doing static poses, as always, try to move around and find those places where you have the most amount of tightness and try to work on those specific areas. So move around, one more breath. Now, inhale, move to the other side. Let's go a little quicker. Hold it here, inhale again, and exhale. Once you twist to the other side, one more time, inhale towards the right. You can have your hands right here. You don't need to use the hands for balance if you're able to do that. Now, hold it here, and we're gonna transfer now to lizard lunge in the other side. So, twist to lizard lunge, and again, lower the right knee, and you can be either on your hands, or if you're feeling a little bit open, you can go into your forms. We're gonna hold here for about 20 seconds. Make sure your hips are always square. Again, your toes can be tucked on tuck, try to create length through the chest so you can go a little deeper into the stretch. One more breath. Now slowly come up, plant your hands. From here, move the right foot back to plank, tuck your pelvis in so everything is engaged. We're gonna go again, lower down to Chaturanga and hold it for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Push all the way up, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Lower halfway, keep leaning forward, five, four, three, two, one. Lower, just one inch from the floor for five, four. Squeeze your elbows together, three, two, one. Inhale for upward facing, shoulders back, and exhale for downward facing. Only two breath in here. We're already getting warm up already. If you need to rest, feel free to pause the video, get some rest. You can always go into child's pose. But if you're with me, lift your left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, bring it to the left tricep. Inhale, single leg down dog. Exhale, twist towards the right tricep. Inhale, single leg down dog. Exhale, towards the nose. Let's repeat that one more time. Inhale, left, hollow up your body. Inhale, open up that hamstring. Exhale, twist, work on the oblique. Inhale, keep your arms straight, centrally rotated. Exhale, knee to the nose, hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Plant your foot and twist 
right away to Skandasana with the right leg extended and the left knee bent. Open the left knee towards the left and keep sending that right leg towards the right. Keep your attention on your breathing. Maybe walk your hands a little forward to get deeper into the stretch. On the next inhale, come up, exhale, twist the left foot, going to the other side. Now inhale, exhale, go to the other side. One more time, inhale, exhale, twist. Now inhale and stand up into a standing forward fall. From here, you're gonna grab both elbows. Into inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, fall as far as you can go. Try to fall first, keeping your back straight. And as soon as you get to your maximum depth, is when you're going to start to round. Relax your head. I'm gonna hold here for about five long breaths. If you can relax your forms in the mat, feel free to do so. Rock side to side to find that spot where you are the most tight. Inhale halfway. Now I'm gonna give you an option to go into a handstand if handstand is in your practice. If not, just stay in the forward fall. Also, you can use some blocks to work on your straddle press. Let me actually demonstrate that. So grab your blocks, put them, up, put them about a little wider than shoulder width. For the uh, straddle press, some people think that you need to go like super wide, but if you go like super, super wide, your hips are just going to be way lower than your shoulders and it's going to be way harder to press up. So find a stand that is not too wide, also, it is not pike because that's gonna be way too hard, but go to a stand, a regular stand. Try to get as deep as you can. The more flexible your hamstrings are here, the easier the press is going to be. And from here, keep your arms completely straight. Accelerate your elbows, engage your scapula, push as hard as you can, go into your tiptoes, and now is when you're going to open your legs. As soon as you lift, you open, so the weight is easily distribu distributed. And then if you find that you can do it, close your legs, hold here for five, four, three, two, one, and slowly come down and stay in the stretch. If you were in a handstand, if you were in the stretch, just remain in the stretch. Go here, by this time you should feel your body much more open than the beginning of the practice. Walk your hands towards the left. Do like a little inversion with the foot so you get a deep stretch all the way here, all the way to your AT band and a little bit more emphasis on your hips. Put it back, plant foot, then go towards the right. Invert your foot a little bit. Fall a little bit more towards that side. Feel the stretch all the way up to here, even on your inner hip. Plant your foot, be right here. And let's go for a second round of handstand, maybe this time without the blocks. So place your hands, if not, you can always stay on your forward fall, or just practice whichever arm balance you feel comfortable practicing, and whichever arm balance is in your practice. So let's try to go for that handstand, one more time. Inhale, by. Activating your scapula, lean forward, go on your tiptoes, go up. You can stay here if closing your legs is going to make you lose balance, but if you can close your legs, close your legs. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Open again and slowly come down. Now, going to a seated position. Let's rest in this seated forward fall, so bring both legs straight forward you, flex your foot so we also stretch in our calf. Now if this is too much and you find yourself like rounding back, I would recommend to place a block beneath your seat bones so you can get a little more depth in your stretch. 
So inhale, lift your chest, suck your belly in, go as far as you can go, keeping your back flat. Then it's when you go into round. And if you get up to here, you can also use the second block to actually place your head and relax into the stretch. We're gonna be here for about 30 seconds to catch our breath up. If you find that you can go a little deeper, inhale, lift your chest a little higher, exhale, fall a little deeper. Also, you can grab your foot, flex a little more, so you engage more of your calf. Press them towards you, inhale, lift your chest higher, exhale, fall deeper. Also, you can grab the block to use it to actually press even more. Get your elbows towards the mat if you can. Remember that yoga and flexibility itself it's not how the pose looks it's just as long as you're feeling the stretch even if you are right here and you feel the stretch right here that's more than enough and there is no point in actually just showing off how far you can go but actually just getting into a position that you actually feel the stretch so that might be here that might be here whichever place you are let's go for five more seconds look side to side open up those hamstrings Now, we're gonna work on one exercise for strength. We're gonna use the blocks. If you are really flexible and also really strong, you can do this without the blocks. We're gonna go for L-sit, holding it for three seconds, and then we're gonna go back to plank, and we're gonna do three push-ups. Then we're gonna go back to L-sit, hold it for two seconds, then go back uh, two push-ups, then one second, and then one push-up. So if you don't need the blocks, like if you have the flexibility to actually hold the L-sit, then go all the way back. By any means, go ahead and do that, but that's really hard for most people. So use some blocks or something to elevate yourself. You can place it this way or even this way. It'll make it much easier, actually. It'll be harder for balance, but it, it will make it easier just because you can lift your body higher and it's going to be much easier. So I'm gonna go for actually the easier variation. And I'm gonna go for L-sit and then the push-up, but you can also go for tuck L-sit if L-sit is still a work in progress for you. By the way, I have an L-sit tutorial that I'm gonna link it up right here if you wanna take a look on that. But place your hands on the blocks or on the floor or on the blocks right here, whichever uh, modification you wanna use. Hold the L-sit for three, two, one. Try to come back as control, like going basically in like tuck planche or lolasana for all my yogis and then push back to a, towards a plank position, lower down as deep as you can go, so for one, two more, two, keep your core engaged, three, now try to jump with control into an L-sit for two, one, now go back to a push-up for one and two, I'm going to show you the easier variation if you're going to jump, swing one foot up, the other one up. So I do want to attack L-sit for one second or L-sit one second, then step back for plank. Only one push-up, go as deep as you can go, and then push yourself back up, go back to L-sit, and sit down for another forward fall. Inhale, lift your chest, exhale, fall. Only 10 seconds here to catch up our breath. Getting ready for the last exercises. Deep breath, inhale through the nose. Exhale now through the mouth, everything out. Inhale, slowly come up. Now, keeping your legs where they are, you can remove the blocks. Now, from here, keeping your legs straight, you're going to slowly keeping your a hollow body position in your entire torso. You're going to lower down with control, engaging your core. Now you're going to point your toes, 
We're gonna hold it here, make sure your low back is in contact with the ground. If this is too easy, you can bring your hands overhead, but if you bring your hands overhead, and you start arching, then bring your hands forward. We're gonna hold this for 15 seconds. So I'm gonna be right here. Keep everything tight, keep your quads tight, your toes are pointed, your low back is pressing strongly towards the mat. You keep your attention on your breathing. Five, four, three, two, one, and slowly come up. Now bring the soles of your feet together for Barabakasana or butterfly. Inhale, lift your chest, fall, keeping your back straight, and then it's when you begin to round. So modifications for this pose, you can place a block beneath your seat bones, you're gonna make it way, way easier. And if you are more advanced and you can actually like lay down completely, you can place a block actually below your feet. It's gonna make the stretch much, much more intense. Inhale, lift your chest. Now exhale, fall as far as you can go and then relax. You can also grab the second block to relax your head. We're gonna be here for about 20 seconds. You can close your eyes to relax into the stretch. Remember flexibility is about relaxing basically, like if you send pain signals to your body and you try to contract, your body's going to react by contracting. So you wanna keep a relaxed mind, and that's gonna give you a relaxed body. If you wanna go a little deeper, you can turn up the block, go a little deeper, maybe it smells your feet you want to, if you're into that. <laughs> Two more breaths. Maybe walk your hands forward. And slowly come back up. In whichever position you are, maybe your block is your seat bones, your block is beneath your feet, it doesn't really matter. As I said, it doesn't matter how the pose look. As long as you're feeling the stretch, it is your body, it is your practice, so adjust your practice to your level. Finally, we're gonna work a little bit on our back bends. So to start warming up into our back, basically, inhale and lift your hips for bridge pose. You can grab your hands, interlace your fingers, and open through the chest. We're gonna hold here for about 10 seconds only. And if this is too intense, and you want more of a relaxed practice, you can place a block your seat bones and just relax right here. Music is like a dream, one that I cannot hear. Two more breaths. Music is not in the notes, but in the silence between. One more. Now, you have the option to stay on bridge if wheel still way too hard for you. Again, I have a wheel follow along uh, routine that I'm gonna link it up right here and everything down in the description. So if you're gonna go for wheel, go for wheel, but if wheel is too intense and you're still working towards that, stay on bridge pose and you can even just put the block there and just relax in that pose. But for those who can do the wheel, place your hands next to your ears, bring your elbows close to you, inhale, lift your hips first, engage your glutes and slightly your core as well to protect the low back, inhale now completely, extend your arms and push the chest back towards the room, your legs can be slightly bent or it can be completely straight, there are many variations for wheel, it is, again it is your practice so adjust the exercises to your level. And if you want to go deeper, you can always walk the feet forward, then plant it and push your chest a little more. Let's hold it here for five, four, three, two, one, and slowly come down by bending your arms first, getting the head towards the mat first, then slowly bringing your back towards the mat and then your hips. Now to contrast that pose, we're gonna do a shoulder stand. So legs are 
together and straight. You're gonna bring them up and you're gonna have your hands to support your low back. From here, use the strength of your low back to strengthen your legs up to the sky. Get them as straight as possible. And from here, use your shoulders and your triceps and all the way up to your elbows to support yourself up. Maybe adjust your hands by bringing it more towards the upper back. Maybe extend more, engage your glutes, your quads. You can keep the gaze on your toes or in your belly button, whichever feels more comfortable. I'm gonna hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Now slowly bring your legs together, back towards the room. Make your feet touch the floor. Now several variations, you can stay right here or you can grab your hands together, interlace your fingers, open more through the chest. Then you can also, your feet, well my feet right now are pointed, you can flex them to walk a little backwards, get a deeper stretch on your low back, on your neck, basically all your anterior part of your body. And if you feel comfortable right here, you can bring the right knee down towards the floor and the left knee down towards the floor. I know this seems pretty awkward and intense, but you don't need to be right here. Just to stop whenever you feel the stretch. Hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Release your hands, support your low back strengthen your legs one more time use the strength of your hands and your low back and your core and everything to bring it up again for a shoulder stand hold for three two one now slowly bring it down so your upper back touches the mat then your low back touches the mat then slowly bring your legs towards the mat now as always we're going to finish off with a twist to neutralize our spine after all that forward fall back bending so bring the left knee towards you hug it strong towards your chest now you're gonna bring it towards the right make sure your hips try to keep them as square as possible like not twisting completely but you're twisting from your belly at the same time the left peg imagine like you're pushing it towards the left then you can extend your left arm, look at your left hand, and just relax here into the stretch. You can also place a block underneath your knee to make the position a little more comfortable. I'm gonna hold it here for just two deep breaths. You can close your eyes, we're just finishing the practice. Slowly inhale, go back to center, extend the left knee. Now bring the right knee towards you, twist towards the left. Again, you can place a block in your knees. Make sure you're trying to completely twist so you're not basically just laying down in this motion, but you are, as your knee goes towards the left, your upper body goes towards the right and you're twisting from your belly. You extend your right arm, like, cannot extend my right arm, but extend your right arm. I'm gonna put it right here, which is also another modification if you wanna work on the strength of your rotator cuff and your shoulder flexion mobility in external rotation, basically. So you can keep, keep it here or you can extend your arms and look at your right hand. Just breathe for three long breaths. Close your eyes if you want to. Try to relax your body and Find any tension that you might still carry on, just let it go. Inhale, slowly come up, hug the knee towards your chest, then extend the knee. And you're going to relax in Shavasana, basically laying down to put both feet to the corner of your mat. You can place your hands facing up, close your eyes. You can now release the control of your breathing and just let it be natural. 
And again, if you find any other tension that I already feel it right now, just relax and open up. And you can stay in this position for as long as you want to. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed this type of routine. Even though we're doing yoga and I know a lot of you guys are calisthenics athletes, trust me that doing a yoga practice at least three or four times per week is really, really going to improve your calisthenics journey, it's going to make you more aware of your body, it's going to increase your flexibility that is needed for many, many calisthenics skills. And if you are a yogi, I would encourage you to try our calisthenics routine so you can build some additional strength in your yoga practice. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up to support the channel. And if you want more routines like this, or if you have any requests for future videos, leave it in the comment section down below and we'll make sure to cover that in future videos. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any content in the future. And as always, guys, I'll see you all next week. Much love. What is up, guys? I really hope you enjoyed this practice. For this week's challenge, we're going to be doing one of the last moves that we did on the practice, which was the three-second L-sit hold, followed by three push-ups, then two-second followed by two push-ups, then one second L-sit, followed by one push-up. What I want you guys to do is pick the highest number that you can go both for the L-sit hold and for the push-up. Let's say you wanna pick a 10 second L-sit and then a 10 push-up, you wanna be doing 10 second L-sit, 10 push-ups, nine, nine, eight, eight. Pick a number that you think that you can do it right. You can choose any elevation that you like or you can also do it, do it on the floor. Like, it doesn't really matter as long as you're holding that L-sit for a second and not a millisecond. And as long as you're doing that push-up full range of motion is all that matters. So, wish you luck. See you next week. Peace out.